entirely betrayed, and rightfully so. You know, I have always been there for the Cuban people. During my time in Congress, I have worked to lift up Cuban families here in Tampa and on the island of Cuba. I've fought for the Quento Propistas, the small business owners on the island. I've pressed for human rights. I've pressed for religious freedom. I've pressed this regime for economic reform and change. But this government under Diaz-Canel and the communist regime there, they have failed their people. So just like Jose Marti over 100 years ago, who came to Tampa and rallied support for the Cuban people and liberty, freedom, and independence, we are doing so again today. Today, I'm calling for a peaceful transfer of power on the island of Cuba. The common laborio have a right to choose their own government. And the United States of America should stand with the people of Cuba now to encourage and work for that peaceful transfer of power. We need to lead the countries in the Western Hemisphere for a peaceful transfer of power, allow the common laborio to choose their own government. Todos unidos por libertad in una transición de poder pacífica. Viva Cuba libre. Libre. Viva Cuba libre. Viva. Janet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we hear the roosters, and uh, I was born here in Ybor City, as were my uh, my parents, my grandparents. Um, the lectors that were in the cigar factories in Ybor City would read um, the periodicals, and they would. Um, they would sit up there and they'd read from Spain, they'd read from Cuba, they'd read from uh, Sicily. Um, but the people of this community were so passionate about their politics and what was happening in their homeland that they would oftentimes get up and throw chairs at each other and erupt in big fights. So the lectors then were not allowed to read periodicals anymore. They had to read only the classics so that uh, our passionate brothers and sisters wouldn't fight. So my grandparents were experts at all the classics um, because of that. But for over a century, the people of Cuba have been living at the hands of their government. They've been slowly losing their civil and basic human rights under this current communist dictatorship created by Fidel Castro, which is preposterous. The outrage here is not new. Cubans have been tired for decades, but this movement right now is absolutely historical. And I say that because the people of Cuba know, they know what they face when they take to the streets in protest. They are saying that I am willing to die for protest. I am willing to disappear in the middle of the night to do what is right and to fight for my people and to fight for the liberation of Cuba. And that will happen. It will happen that they will disappear in the night. Two doctors on television, uh, not television, but on social media, took to social media because one of, their, one of their partners, they watched him be bludgeoned to death, a physician bludgeoned to death while he was protesting. And rather than be afraid, these two physicians stood before the camera and said, we're going out there again. And if we die, it will not be in vain. So I ask um, my Congresswoman and I ask the country, the best country in the world, the United States of America, to stop this horrific, horrific human disgrace that is happening in Cuba. They're, they're, the vaccines are not available. There's no, medica no medication, there's no milk, there's no food. It is an atrocity that the lack of food and medicine in this country were present before, but they have been exacerbated by this pandemic. If we saw what we struggled through in the pandemic, imagine what the Cuban families are suffering, all at the hands of a dictatorship that doesn't care. It is time to end this Cuba. It is time to turn the page and open up this country 
make it a place that my grandparents remember visiting like others visited the Bahamas, like others visited Cuba for a vacation. Enough is enough. The people of Cuba have spoken. They're willing to die to fight for their rights and the future of their country. So join us all as we ask for a liberated Cuba. Thank you very much. Good morning, my name is Nancy Milan. I'm Hillsborough County tax collector. I'm also born here in Ybor City and my roots go deep um, as my parents are immigrants of Cuba. And so this is very personal to me. Um, having family members in Cuba right now, I've seen firsthand uh, what this government has done to our people. It's not about the, uh, you know, tourism, everything else that was opening up they at least had an opportunity to make money on their own um, to buy food and medication. Right now they have access to nothing. When I say that, I, um, I can't um, stress enough um, the dire need for basic necessities that are in Cuba right now. Um, and having my personal fam family in there right now um, and not being able to even communicate with them, it breaks my heart. This is a historical moment, not only in Cuba, but to see our Cuban community and our Latin community and everyone unite uh, for something that just has so much purpose. Um, enough is enough. I thank Congresswoman Kathy Castor and, the, and Senator Cruz and Luis Vieira um, who are here in support and using our positions as a voice so that it can be heard and hopefully make a change a much needed change um, in Cuba. Um, what we've seen on the streets of Cuba is historical. Um, the courage that it takes to protest and be out there um, when they don't have any weapons. They're using rocks and using their hands and fists to fight to overcome something that has taken over their lives for over 60 years. I stand in solidarity with my people and I wish for a free Cuba um, as soon as possible. We um, need to stand together and I thank you so much for this opportunity and I intend to continue to voice my opinion and fight for something that's right. This is a humanitarian, it has nothing to do with parties. This has to do with doing the right thing for our people. And there's so many connections right here in this historical place that we stand right now. Our point here is to stand in solidarity and use our voices to make a change. Que viva Cuba! Que viva Cuba, por favor! Estoy tan emocionada porque soy de hija cubano. Y esto es una emoción grandísima acá. Esto es un, un momento histórico en Cuba y aquí en Tampa. Es tiempo para unirnos, unirnos para un cambio en Cuba que es tan necesitado. Gracias por el momento de para poder usar mi voz para expresar la necesidad que tenemos que, que seguir para adelante para asegurar que Cuba sea libre y que la, nuestra gente y nuestros hermanos en Cuba puedan sobrevivir lo que están pasando ahora mismito. Gracias y que tengan buen día. Thank you so much. I'm uh, T Tampa City Councilman Lewis Fear. It's a great honor to be here. Nancy, uh, thank you for your words and your passion. Senator Cruz, thank you for your words. And, and Congresswoman Castor, thank you as always for your uh, important leadership. This is such an important issue. This is, as you hear from all of us, something that is so deeply personal. And I can tell you that in Tampa, the Cuban refugee and the Cuban American and the Cuban exile community is united 100% in favor of liberty for our brothers and sisters in Cuba right now. I don't care if you came in 1960 in a freedom flight in 1965, if you're a Marilito from 1980, I don't care if you came in the crisis of 94 or if you came just five years ago. We are united. United as not just those with Cuban blood, but united as Americans who know a thing or two about what it takes for men and women to rise up and demand freedom and liberty. We've seen it in our country. And that's why we are standing with the men and women and the boys and girls and the children and the families of Cuba. Such an important issue. I was raised always as a Cuban American, somebody who always knew that my mom and my dad left Cuba in 1960. 
My dad was 16 years old. My mom was 11 years old from Hershey, Cuba. There were a lot of things that I was raised with. I was always raised to respect the political prisoners who came from Cuba. I was always raised to respect the patriots who fought for a free Cuba. And I was always raised to be so thankful, thankful for this great country, the United States of America, for being there for my family, for my family, for all of our families who only wanted to yearn to be free. And this country had our back. And this city has our back, the city of Tampa. We are a diverse city. And we're a city, like I always says, that stands with refugees. I don't care if you come from Syria, from Iraq, from Venezuela, or from Cuba. This city has the backs of refugees because that's the American way. And we don't just have the backs of refugees, but we have the backs of the, the, those who suffer from the regimes that those refugees flee day in and day out. That's what our city does. And that's what we're trying to do, as Congresswoman Castor said in Tampa City Council. I was proud to offer, and it'll be voted on tomorrow, Thursday, a resolution to have the city council in the city of Tampa stand without equivocation, without hesitation, and with full moral clarity behind liberty and freedom for the people of Cuba right now. People can disagree on the means to the ends of how to get there. There's a lot of debate on that, and we can have healthy debate. But I think that on the ultimate end, that the people in the streets are fighting for and dying for and being attacked for, good Americans and certainly good campaigners have got to have the backs of the people in the streets right now in Cuba. That's what it's about. When you take a look at our best aspirational American values that we've gone for in our best moments in history, this is what this is about right now. And as everybody has said right now, this is not about Republicans or Democrats. This is about us facing the moment as Americans. And in that regard, I thank our Congresswoman for her amazing leadership. Thank you so much and God bless you. Well, Councilman Vieira, I thank you for your clarion call for unity on behalf of the city of Tampa, the city this community that has such an integral history to Cuban independence and freedom, the fact that we are standing here in front of the statue of great Cuban freedom fighter, Jose Marti, who kept coming back to Tampa year after year after year in support of independence of Cuba. And I hope that this moment in time will speak to the peaceful protesters in Cuba that again the city of Tampa the Tampa Bay community stands with you and we're calling for a peaceful transfer of power this moment in history so we I want to thank Senator Janet Cruz for her leadership Nancy Milan for speaking from the heart she understands this history and again Councilman Vieira for offering this clarion call for uh, unity and freedom for the Cuban people. I think we'd all be happy to take any questions at chat. You've spoken often about the skeleton staff at the U.S. Embassy in Cuba, and how do you think that that would be the skeleton staff to be able to change the Could you introduce yourself to me? Oh, sorry, Romy Thank you. Yeah, it's, this is, that's kind of a, her question is the, um, the embassy in Cuba has been shut down for a number of years, and it's been very unfortunate for the Cuban people who have wanted to connect with their families here in the U.S. Uh, because they have not been able to obtain their non-immigrant visas to come and see their abuela, to see, connect with their family. Uh, the, but I think today we've really got to look forward. Uh, it's not an issue of is that embassy opened or closed. It's really an issue now of the United States of America playing a leadership role in the Western Hemisphere to bring about a peaceful transfer of power in Cuba. The, the Castro Diaz Canal regime have failed their people. They have betrayed their people. Uh, and that is why you see peaceful protests, peaceful protests in the streets. And we're going to be looking for ways for the United States of America to partner with the people of Cuba in a peaceful transfer of power.
I know if you all want to answer that. Congresswoman, you're, you're emphasizing a peaceful transition of power. I want to get your thoughts or maybe somebody else here about Miami Mayor Francis Suarez said yesterday that he wants President Biden to contemplate didn't say the demand to do this, but contemplate military intervention in Cuba. Your yeah, I was I I was distressed by uh, a call for airstrikes uh, from the Miami mayor. That that is, uh, I think that would only bring uh, greater injury and death uh, to the Cuban people. What we need to be focused now on pressuring this regime to move on to uh, to give the common ordinary Cubans a voice in their government and I think it's going to be the United States of America in the lead with other countries in the Western Hemisphere to pressure the Diaz-Canel regime to move on and allow a, a peaceful transfer of power and to put that framework into play. I'm sure you all want to mention. And I just want to mention when we speak in terms of peaceful transition, I want to mention that because our legislature in Florida recently passed HB1, I'm going to um, tell the Cuban Americans that are here that are protesting because I was out there yesterday that they should be cautious and make sure that their protests are peaceful um, because we passed a bill that subjects them to arrest if it's not a peaceful protest so I would urge them to stay peaceful stay out of the streets um, so that they don't get arrested I didn't vote for that bill but I it's just a warning to my folks. I plan to be at every uh, protest that I can be, but I, I don't want to see um, harm come to our our Tampanians here as they voice their right to demonstrate. Well, Senator, in South Florida, they were blocking roadways. Should they have been arrested? Is the governor being hypocritical? Well, you know, um, I, I think that time will tell. I, this is not over. I think that these protests are mounting. There's one today in Ybor City, and that's a good question. Uh, you know. Is the governor uh, speaking a double standard? I don't know, but I'm not here today to talk about that. I'm here to talk about a peaceful transition of power in Cuba so that people can um, live a life that's somewhere near humane. humane. And, um, but I just want to warn folks that we have a double standard here, and I don't want to find them arrested for, for demonstrating for what they're so passionate about. Congresswoman, what, is, what are the policy prescriptions that you're pushing for? I mean, we saw the Obama administration I think in the past it was right to support families and small business owners on the island to empower them. Uh, I think we need to continue to do so. I think there are, there's a very important humanitarian role now just on basics and fundamentals, food, medicine, uh, diplomatic pressure. Uh, see how they respond. I think the uh, the Cuban, the communist dictatorship should be ashamed of the way that they have treated their people and the way they have reacted to the peaceful protest. Folks simply want the basics in life, everything that we want every day, a safe place for their families, food on the table, a meaningful existence, and this autocratic re regime in Cuba has robbed the people of that and they continue to do that and I think for the United States of America I, I intend to uh, work to pressure and, and encourage the Biden administration to come up with those policy prescriptions but right now it's fundamental maybe it's trying to get the internet uh, connected the Diaz Canal regime should do that they shouldn't be be afraid of that uh, but I think the we're fortunate to have some very smart diplomats in the State Department folks who are experienced in, in helping with these peaceful transfers of power, avoid injury, avoid, uh, avoid violence. Uh, that's what we stand for in this country, and I think we, I think we can get there. Anyone else? Well, Thank Senator you. Cruz, uh, speaking about internet, I know that the governor mentioned yesterday having some Florida businesses uh, be able to provide that. I don't know how that's possible, but would you support that? Uh, absolutely. I don't know how it's possible either. Um, it's it's a great idea in theory. So the application of it, I, I, I'm i not a tech-savvy person. I have no idea what that would take, but I, I think that would be wonderful. But, you know, it's not just about providing Internet. Then how do these folks have access to a computer where they can actually communicate with someone? It's it's you know much more rudimentary than just say just saying we have access. These are not people with cell phones. These are not people with laptops. These are not people with 
you know, Apple computers sitting at home, so it's much more complex. The problems are multiplicative there. I just wanted to add real quick to that with this, with the capability of having those communications within the country is essential. If you notice, that's what um, helped them organize and throw to the streets, which is a historical movement. So the fact that they are able to communicate is key. Um, that's the one thing that we could do that's peaceful, but allowing them their voices to be heard um, and actually organizing um, in numbers so that they can really make a difference from, from within. Um, right now, they're not able to do that. Um, so I think that's key in helping them organize themselves to really uh, unite as uh, a country and overthrow um, this terrible regime. You know, Nancy, I, I think you're right. I think it's, it's difficult for people in America to understand the deprivation now in Cuba and your, the inability of people to communicate with their, their family members. In, in my office, I have a number of uh, uh, staff members who work every single day connecting Cuban families. They're, they're Cuban selves. And <clears throat> right now, they are cut off from their family and are not able to communicate with them. Uh, what I think would be helpful from uh, the Tampa Cuban families is to share their stories of their relatives on the island of Cuba with us, with all of us right now. I know that it is difficult because the internet has been cut off by the, the autocratic regime. But I think it is very important for policymakers like us to be able to hear from families here in Tampa what they know of their relatives in Cuba right now so that we are well informed and can communicate that and make the best policy decisions as we fight for a free Cuba. Okay, okay thank you all very much. We'll just got you. Thank you. Good job. Excuse me, excuse me. Hey, great job. Okay, you did a great job. Go get them. Yes. Right here? Yeah, that way it's.